Welcome to the Rise to the Challenge podcast. Joined today, she's an author, writing coach, and entrepreneur. It's Rosie Pova. How are you doing today, Rosie? I'm doing great. How are you, Alex? I'm doing so good. We're so excited to have you on the show to talk about your Rise to the Challenge. What we like to do with all of our guests is go right to the beginning. Talk about where you're from and what were you involved in growing up? Yes, well, um, I'm originally from Bulgaria. That's where um, I was born and um, grew up in Bulgaria. So um, I was a young adult when I um, immigrated to North America. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Living in Bulgaria, what is something culture-wise that has been so key to you that you have brought over here to North America? Oh, uh, well, I guess a little bit of everything, um, not just one specific thing, but um, yeah, try to mix it up, <laughs> uh, especially since my kids were born here and for many years they haven't been back, like they uh, actually have never seen Bulgaria <laughs> up until recently, so um yeah, introducing them to um, some things from back home was um just to incorporate uh, was fun. <laughs> yeah. What was something that you enjoyed doing growing up? Oh, I was uh, an introvert and I loved um, reading, listening to music, um, writing, um, poetry, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> daydreaming and in my room and just doing my own thing. I was very crafty too. Uh, that was another thing that I really enjoyed doing. Um, so yeah. Would you say that creativity kind of shines when you got involved with listening to music, doing poetry, writing, those kind of activities? Yes, absolutely. I was very creative. Um, and that was my thing. Um, in school, um, I love literature and foreign languages. Um, I didn't care about math or <laughs> <laughs> chemistry or <laughs> any of that. But yeah, I was very creative. So that was my definitely uh, my thing. Before making the move to North America, did you kind of have any idea that the move was going to happen? Um, yeah, because I was right, already an adult um, and I was into foreign languages and it was a dream to um, travel, to um, go places, other countries, um, see other cultures. Um, I was very curious about that. Um, and so I kind of knew that I would end up somewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> um, outside of Bulgaria um, one way or the other. And um, yeah, and then and then I happened to be uh, North America. I was crazy about French because I did go to French language school. And at one point that was my obsession. So Paris and France, you know, it was always that in the beginning. But then I ended up being um, in an English speaking country. <laughs> Have you gone England, to Canada? We lived we lived uh, in Canada for a while, and but we were in the Vancouver, BC area. So again, it was English. With coming to America, there's so many different places you can go to. You can go to the north, the south, the west, the mm -hmm. east, everywhere. When you were making that decision to where you're going to start, how did that process go? Because a lot of people sometimes just say, "Wherever I land, that's going to be the start starting point." But did you have a game plan in mind? No, not really. But um, we ended up doing that um, because um, it was my husband's job. And so he uh, kind of had to move from state to state. And, and then I uh, followed. And when we decided to start a family, um, he kind of picked being more places than myself. Uh, he kind of picked um, Dallas, Texas for us. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's where we uh, we still are. Yeah. Did making the move over to the United States change your career plans or what were you wanting to do as a career? Well, um, it was complicated because, um, so when I came and we started family, you know, we kind of had to start from scratch and, mm -hmm. um, just finding different jobs, um, trying to support the family. Um, I didn't have any particular plan <laughs> that I was going to follow. Uh, but then when I fell in love with um, 
you know, picture books, um, reading to my kids. And I um, kind of reignited that love for, for creativity, for, for writing, for reading, and that outlet that I've been missing for a while. Um, and then started writing my own stories. Um, then I definitely had an idea and an obsession to become an author. <laughs> so that kind of, you know, took shape at that point. With writing, did you kind of take some of the things that you wrote when you were younger and kind of see how can I incorporate it into now and what I'm able to write in those picture books and things like that? Um, well, I wouldn't say that. Well, I thought I, I knew how to write in the beginning because um, I was a reader and then um, uh, just growing up remembering what kind of books I read but then I realized like it's a totally different industry here like the the storytelling is different uh culture is different um and I couldn't rely on what I thought I knew so I had to like re-educate myself on 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 the craft and the writing and um just take that new direction um and look at it with fresh eyes so yeah <laughs> Did you ever have a time where you didn't know what was next for you? Did what did it get struggling? Did you struggle in a way? Oh yes, all the time. Um even in between, you know, so the writing thing was still um something I did on the side. You know, I still had a job. I uh, used to work at um as a dental assistant and some other odd jobs and um and then we had a plumbing business and all of these things that kept me busy. And especially with three young kids at home, um, I didn't really have free time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so um, I was just trying to figure it out as I as I went along. Um, and there are plenty of obstacles, as you can, you know, imagine with, you know, being not having the time being always tired and um, not knowing really the next step, but but trying to, um, to make it happen. So yeah, there was there was a lot of obstacles for sure. Talk about a little bit more about those obstacles. What kept you motivated to get through them? Well, that same passion, that creativity, you know, that outlet that I needed, uh, because in, in the end of the day, that's uh, that was making me happy. And that was something I really enjoyed doing. And um, I just couldn't let it go. Um, no matter what else was happening, I was just always coming back, even though it, it times it was frustrating because this business is very competitive uh there's a lot of rejection there's a lot of um uncertainty and you just do it for the love of it and then you don't know when or if or how it might happen for you um so um yeah the 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 heartbreak <laughs> with those rejections and the not knowing and especially for me you know when i had to really learn the the language and catch up with everything else um, and then on top of that, um, figure out how this business worked. Um, cause I had no clue really. I was confused <laughs> as most, uh, beginner authors are. Um, and then, um, you know, that was one part of it. And then with the regular job that I have and being a mom <laughs> at home, um, again, you know, how do you find even the time or the energy to, to, to do what you love? Um, but, but I had to, and what kept me motivated is again, that, that passion that, um, I couldn't, I couldn't give up. So I had mm -hmm. to find a way. <laughs> Was there ever a time, did you feel that you maybe regretted a decision? Maybe I should have moved into a new area or take those risks, take those opportunities and things like that. Oh, uh, regret that I moved from not the regret, maybe like, did I do it too early? Should I've had more of an established writing business and things like that? Or maybe a game plan. Sometimes we hear stories where they take that risk right away. And they're like, maybe I didn't do it at the right timing. Do you feel that the timing that you came, and you started all these new opportunities, these new experiences, it was the right time for you, because that's what you felt? Yes, yes, I believe it was. I don't want to uh, live with a regret. And yep. um, so even 
when, you know, all of those mistakes I had to make and learn from them, um, I would rather make that them earlier rather than later and then learn and, and, you know, uh, like course correct and, and, and do what I needed to do. Um, because at some point maybe you would be, if I had to put it off and, you know, oh, I'll just get ready and I'll do it when I'm ready. I might never be ready. And, mm -hmm. you know, when are you even ready? <laughs> So I'm glad that I didn't really overthink that at the beginning. And I was uh, pretty naive to, you know, because I didn't know a lot about that business. And maybe that was for the better, you know, because otherwise I might have gotten scared or <laughs> just not try at all. So I'm glad that I did at the time. And so everything fell into place um, eventually. <laughs> How did the decision to go to Canada, you mentioned that a little bit earlier where you went from Texas to now we're going to Canada. Oh, no, that was the uh, the very beginning. So the very first uh, stop was Canada. Well, um, that's where we lived for, for a while. That's where my first child was born. Again, it was all because of my husband and then different immigration stories. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, that was our first uh, home. And um, it, it will always be a special place for me. Like I said, my first child was born there. Um, so yeah, we, we go back and visit. And it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, country. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about living in Canada? Oh, it was just beautiful nature. Vancouver is amazing. Um, you know, there's the ocean and the mountains and everything you want. And then the food is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just great. <laughs> yeah. With the differences, were you kind of seeing similarities on how you were living in Bulgaria? And then when you were living in Canada, were you able to kind of see the connection and live like a normal life? and not really have to change how you lived? Um, well, I can't really compare. No, it's totally different cultures, different um, countries. Um, so I can say that I did see very many similarities, um, but I was able to live normal life because yeah. you always adapt to a better place, right? And a better life, much easier. So um, it, it is a dream um, for me. It was, I was really happy. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. As an author, what's been kind of the feedback you've been getting? Um, about my work or about your work, about people that are reading and they're kind of learning more about the story that you're writing or what's your impact message that you're bringing? Yes. Well, um, I've heard people, um, say that I do write uh, social emotional, um, stories, um, like sort of on the sweet heartfelt, um, side. So that is, um, that's, uh, sounds good to me <laughs> because yeah, the first, um, few books that, um, I, I had published, um, were all really personal stories, uh, sort of, um, you know, about family relationships. Um, but I also write, um, some quirky and humorous stories that I'm now getting into, um, uh, having published into books so um yeah that's been the feedback and um people love the message um even though I, you know I'm not trying to to convey any particular message but it's it's there because because of the story um and teachers love the books um so I've been um really fortunate to have wonderful reviews um you know being featured in the New York Times and Parents Magazine to recommend my books so I I really um I've been lucky <laughs> with the books you mentioned that readers are able to hear the motions that you've had and you just mentioned that you talked about family and relationships is it hard to write about personal connections and your stories that maybe you've had you've gone through and be able to express or does this kind of give you a co confidence or power to be able to show the real authentic you um, yeah, it's, it's always great to use the authentic emotion, um, even if you end up, you know, transforming the story, but just as a starting point, just to take that emotion and, and use it, um, to find the heart of the story. So, um, it's not necessarily, 
a true <laughs> story. <laughs> it's still fiction, uh, but the emotion is there. And and I think that's that's a great combination, you know, to have the two um, and and be able to be creative and express yourself uh, that way. You don't have to stick to, um, you know, reality 100%. Has there ever been a moment where you wanted to write a story that was truly the characters were you, even though it's a fiction story? Uh, well, I, I can tell you that um, all of my stories have a lot um, in them from me. Mm -hmm. So all like all of the characters, I can see different parts, different experiences in, in, in my characters that come from my personal experience, all my personality. So. Um, yeah, I am. I'm doing that um, already. So, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's fun to do that, really. What's the been the reaction for you when you get those big publications to kind of hear like New York Times bestseller, Parents Magazine, those big names and you're featured in them? Uh, yeah, the New York Times um, selected um, my books for for a review. Um, it was really exhilarating, um, such a joy, um, especially for the New York Times. It was unexpected um, when I got the news that it was uh, reviewed and um, just really super excited and happy. I, I don't I will probably never forget, you know, the moment that I found out Um and this gives me really uh, great validation and um, and motivation. <laughs> Do you feel that the sacrifices and all the hard work to get that moment has been worth it, where no one's going to stop you because this is what you love doing. This is what you want to do. And you just love expressing and writing and things like that. Oh, yes, definitely. Even when times were tough um, and I felt like giving up and did try to give up, I couldn't. Um, I just, you know, the next day I was still doing the same thing. I was writing and reading and revising and researching. And so um, just the joy, you know, from that expression, the the creating the, of the story, the um, the outlet that I had was um, something that I needed. So I couldn't just, you know, drop it um, because it was part, part of me. Um, I, I've i always been that person. So, mm -hmm. um, so it was there. And yes, you know, with these other things happening with, you know, being published, being reviewed and being um, recognized. Yes, of course, that that's just, you know, reinforcing, but, but it's there. <laughs> For someone that's listening to this interview as an entrepreneur like yourself, what would you tell someone to start their business, start going and getting really involved with their business that they want to create? Well, they have to make a decision, um, like really um, commit to their goal or dream or business or whatever it is, uh, especially if there's, if it's something that they're passionate about, um, you know, um, it's it's really uh, great to to recognize that and then um commit to it um and maybe yeah start start planning a few steps ahead um even one little step um a day will add up and and take you you know, in the direction of your goal. So um just doing that, finding support system, um, learning what you need to learn um and and always improving i yeah i think it's one of those things where just go for it i mean make yeah. sure you know that the risk that you're taking because you don't want to regret not doing it that's how i live exactly. you yes, want to go yes. for it experience yes. it yeah things will not be perfect um and they might not work the first time or the third or the 30 fourth time but um eventually um yeah if you keep going um you learn even from the mistakes and from the failures for the setbacks anything um as long as you keep doing it and in and enjoying it and really it makes sense for you and you're passionate about um then yeah don't don't stop you talked about that you like the travel the kind of like you talked about France and all these different places where's that next dream location you would like to travel to oh okay 
uh if i have to pick just one now because i've done <laughs> quite a bit of traveling <laughs> by now so oh i want to go does it have to be like a new uh place or something no it can be anything okay i want to go back to italy <laughs> where england you said uh, italy it oh that's that's italy. on my bucket list is italy yes yes so what about italy for you oh it, it's it's just the feeling it was it was amazing and so beautiful and so i want to um the only so when i visited for the very first time i stayed there like for 24 hours so i barely got to see anything um and i was in rome so i want to visit um a lot more cities and experience the culture and the food and yep. the beauty and everything so yeah, definitely going back there. But I have many other places that I want to visit too. So I'm not going to stop with just <laughs> one, but I'm just giving you one for now. <laughs> During this time, a lot of people are itching to kind of get to that next destination spot. And you talked about traveling and immigrating to a new country. For someone that's listening to this interview that might be having those minds set and wanting to make that big jump, what would you tell them to go for it and kind of prepare them for that next move for them? Oh, <laughs> that is a big one because at the time I was really young. So yep. <laughs> I was young and free, right? <laughs> so I could do whatever, anything. Um, and it really depends on the every particular situation. Um but yeah, if they're really, really excited about it, yeah, go for it. There, There's always, it's never too late. Um, but for me personally, yeah, it was a time when I was super adventurous and, and young and looking for that uh, specific next thing. Is there anything that you would change in your journey that you've been on? Has there been a moment that was a huge hit for you personally that maybe I could have done something different. Maybe I need to learn more from that situation, things like that. Oh, well, I like I said, I don't want to live with regret. So whatever it was, um, I probably many things like mm -hmm. I, you know, um, in retrospect, you you look back and you say, oh, well, I could have done that differently, <laughs> whatever that was, even if it was something, you know, minor, but maybe um it cost you like a couple of years yeah <laughs> of your career uh, being stuck um and then you know i i would have done that differently um but again maybe that was for you know for a reason and the timing was what it was um i probably would have researched more um in my business like um literary agents I was represented by and um made maybe like a rash decision um and many other things for I would have mm -hmm. gotten support earlier and a critique group and um and maybe um learned the craft earlier rather than you know just keeping it to myself and trying to figure things out on my own mm -hmm. uh, which took many many years so yeah, definitely thinks that if I wanted to, you know, <laughs> um, point to, I could, could have done differently, but again, it was a learning experience and I guess, um, it had its purpose. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so what does the future look like for you? What are you hoping to accomplish in the next few years, both personally and professionally? Oh, very bright future. <laughs> bright and <laughs> amazing. Um, that's, yeah. Well, personally, yeah, I want to, uh, yeah, keep growing uh, in the direction of my my dreams and goals and, um, you know, just being a um, happy mom and, and an author and publishing many more books, being on many more lists and awards and whatnot just to, <laughs> so uh just to keep that creativity going and and the business um to align with that so um that would be uh something i'm dreaming about doing for the rest of my life so 
The final question I'll ask you, for someone that's listening to this interview based on your journey and experience, what tips or advice would you give them to overcome obstacles, accomplish their goals, and rise to the challenge? Uh, yes. So my advice would be um, to um, do whatever you can um, to believe in yourself and your in your dream if you need support just find that if you need resources find it um just self-care um growth mindset um visualize affirmations uh whatever it is to get you there on a daily basis make a plan just just the three things you can accomplish every day that will take you in the direction of your dream is good enough um and and just keep going Well, Rosie, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about your rise to the challenge. You're inspiring so many people and we're excited to see what the future looks like for you. Oh, thank you, Alex. It was a pleasure being your guest.